describe a little bit of what goes into creating one of those pictures? What what your thoughts are, what you're doing? Well, what I like to tell people is the ADD and the OCD are paying off. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it usually just starts with a drawing. I start drawing and um, and I have bags and bags and bags and, and little boxes of stuff. You know, it used to just be matchbooks, right? And now it's every guy that thing. It's wrappers. <laughs> you know, I go and find it. You ever see those drill cases out on the street picking up pieces of paper? You think, oh, that poor guy is mental. <laughs> That's me. You know. My favorite place, there's this gorgeous paper. There's a parking lot over here on 37th Street. They give people these parking tickets that are pink and red. And they're the most gorgeous stuff. And the guy over there is like, he's, he's like a Russian dude. He's like kind of nuts. I'm like, can I buy some of those stuff from you? No, you don't park the car. It's like, I don't got a car. So what I have to do is wait till he's not around, walk around, look for one on the ground, and they grab it. Um, in fact, one of, the, one of the really wonderful pieces I made called Oh Child for the New Orleans uh, story, which Allison Moore, the singer, wrote. He's got this gorgeous sliver in it of uh, this pink and this red from this parking pass. So I go and I, I find stuff, and, it, and every once in a while somebody will have it in their home and I go, these are matchbooks I collected here and there. And I'm not even, I'm not even polite about it anymore. I always go, can I have those? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and more often than not, they give them to me. And then every once in a while, somebody walks uh, through the door with a big hefty, bag full of matches or uh, cigar bands, um, wrappers, old uh, old games, you know, old, uh, children's books, um, just stuff that we're going to throw out. Um, so these I decided I was going to make purely out of what I call the kibble. Yeah. You know, there weren't really going to be any human figures in them. There weren't really going to be any animal figures in them. But, you know, four or five pieces into it, I always have to draw a creature, you know. So I drew a fighting cock, and I made up this beast that I liked a lot. And um, uh, it starts with a drawing, and then uh, I'll start painting on it with gouache or ink or watercolor, depending on, you know, how I want it to be. These, these are all going to be black and white, you know. There will be daytime things and nighttime things. And, um, I've gotten really crazy for uh, old railroad tickets and uh, transfer passes, like from the 70s. You know when you used to ride the bus and they give you a paper pass? So I've been hunting those down. Um, old maps, uh, I'm crazy for maps. Like the kind you used to buy at the gas station that had that beautiful four color printing on it with all the processed yellow, reds, and greens. and. Um, uh, yeah, I, I get like physically excited when I see those things. <laughs> it's, it's, it's great. Um, and then, you know, for some reason I started putting this sacrificial stag in there. And I don't know why I did that. And then when I went to the Hobo Hotel in Barstow a few months ago, a guy said to me, he said, you know, we were all pretty good hunters. Man. We were all pretty good bowmen. We shot deer, we, we ate them. We would have big, you know, in the whole bunch of jungles, we would have big cookouts and stuff like that. And I'd never really known that, but I'd started cutting out these deer heads. That's a deer head from the Jägermeister box, you know? And I just thought, I love the shape of it, though, because it looked, in, in, in this context, it looks kind of oddly sacrificial. And, um, you know, I, I, I was raised Catholic, and I'm now, you know, your seven-day atheist, but that stuff doesn't wash off. So there's always a sacrificial kind of creature, or uh, this idea of a communion. Um, so the, the, these things, uh, um, they, they kind of became like apparitional. Um, I also honestly uh, looked at a lot of Chris Fitters, at those marvelous collages that Fitters just made out of junk. You know, he just went up and down the streets picking up scraps and wrappers and, and packaging and whatever he had. And, um, <coughs> made this kind of symphony of, of, of beautiful garbage on it. Uh, uh, they, they stay with me. Um, you, you can never, you know, ignore the influence of Joseph Cornell, um, who made those lovely boxes. I've never attempted to make a box for one reason. I think Cornell owns them. 
lock, stock, and barrel. You put anything in the box, you do so at your own peril. So, um, but all of that American handmade stuff, the things that George Hearns made and, and Bruce Conner made in uh, the 60s and 70s, uh, a lot of those beatnik things that, that, that got made, uh, the, the collages by Jess, uh, the wonderful California uh, artists, and by Frank O'Hara here and, and Ray Johnson here, and, and Joe Brainer here. You know, that whole collection of guys who are also poets. You know, they, they, that, you know with, with Brainer, there's always a combination. Is this a function of my poetry, or is my poetry a function of my art making? Um, so you, you, you try to, you know, bargain with that thing as best as possible. But, when I started the whole things, I pretty much wanted things without, you know, the way I usually do, which is a drawn figure in the middle, and then stuff happening around it. Well, now we got a hobo symbol in the middle and stuff <laughs> happening around it. Um, it's how I'm made. I, I was raised on Catholic holy cards, and uh, that that imprint kind of stayed with me, and I made my peace with it. But I think with the hobo things, I got an opportunity to do a lot of different kinds of work making. And part of that is because I came to do Dunning, and they freed me up here. You know, Paul sat me down, and Susan, they were kind enough to let me invade this place three or four times a year, and uh, they said, look, make, make what you make. Here's some possibilities. Here's some wonderful paper. Here's how we're going to get your non-archival paper to become our, our archival paper with our paper. Boy, I can't believe I said that. <laughs> but it was, uh, what, I, what I learned from Paul was how to use, um, you know, methyl cellulose and stuff like that. And put these things together in a way where these are like Fort Knox. They're going to last 400 years. <laughs> um, oftentimes in collage shows, you see they hang them. There's little pieces of shit in the bottom of the frame. <laughs> Stuff's falling off. Not us. <laughs> Not us. We got Paul Wong super blue. So. <laughs> anyway, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Have a beer. Thank you.